20? This is, do you hear the recording thing? Yes, we are good. All right. All right. Well, uh, Amazing. If you're watching the replay, we're going to get started in two minutes. So if you're watching the replay, you can scan forward to the two minute mark. Should, should I wait till everyone's here or just start letting people in? Start admitting people. Okay, cool. As you're joining, we're getting started in about two minutes as we admit people from the waiting room here. Um, so you can hang tight, think of your questions, and then we'll uh, get started. We should have had a theme song. All right. <laughs> some throw some, music. Throw up some elevator music, otherwise. <laughs> I used to do that on YouTube all the time. So make my own intro song. All right. <laughs> Wait, it's all copyrighted by me. So I'll give another minute and I'll get started. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear like the dogs bark in the background. <laughs> My end. Um, great question. Can you get the video recording? Yes, we are recording it and sending it out through email after. Um, we encourage you to stay on live because we have some pre-selected questions we're going to be going through as well. So that way you'll get, um, obviously you hear all those in, in live, but they can also then spark maybe more questions that you may have. Um, and we're going to do uh at the end gonna share some other uh other tips and strategies for long-term focus and productivity so okay we're at the two minute mark we're gonna get started again if you're watching the replay you can you've already fast forward to this point but uh if you have any follow-up questions you can also send us an email otherwise if you're on live welcome welcome so this is our live ask me anything and we're going to run it for about 40 minutes, give or take, depending on the questions. And it's all focused on improving focus and productivity for your career, for at work, even if you work from home. And this is specifically for ADHDers in tech. Um, following the Ask Me Anything portion, we're going to give you some personal personalized action steps to get consistent focus or boost can boost focus consistently without needing to be in a hyper focus mode or rely on meds. And uh, that's going to be a little piece I'm going to share with you on how to do that. And we're also going to give you a little bit of a challenge to implement what you've learned today, whether it's a response to your question or someone else's question. And yeah, because we you know implementation is probably the hardest thing, but what actually makes this effective. So welcome, welcome. My name is Gaia and we have Anchor in here for ADHD Wellness Co. So I am the founder of ADHD Wellness Co. I'm also a late di diagnosis adhd -er. I am not in tech. I do do circus arts. I uh, <laughs> like to perform aerial silks and I live in a beautiful tiny home that I also built a couple years ago. Now, ADHD Wellness Co., just really briefly, we show ADHDers, whether you're diagnosed or not, exactly how to manage ADHD symptoms with a natural med-free approach. And this is so you can improve focus, excel at your career, you know, boost productivity while you feel 100% like yourself without any side effects. Um, so we are and are moving into being the thought leader in the med-free ADHD space. So that means where you research collect all the information from science, our own experiences, our client experiences, and a mix of intuitive insight. And then we can draw conclusions from that so you are empowered and are sovereign in your own ADHD journey. And I'll pass it to Ingrid here to introduce himself. 
Yeah, so uh, my name is Ankaran. Uh, I'm actually a software developer and I've been a software developer for just under two years now. And uh, I, I haven't been officially diagnosed with uh, ADHD, but I share a lot of like the symptoms and like I really resonate with a lot of the comments, especially during the Reddit conversations. I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, watching this have come from uh, that Reddit discussion and AMA that we did recently. And uh, yeah, I just resonate a lot with that. And I feel like I can uh, contribute a lot to some of the solutions that I've come up with uh, during my own like uh, trials and tribulations. And, and, I, 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 and I realized more while I was talking to you guys that I do have a lot of tips that I can share. And, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much why we want to put this together. Yeah, yeah. And to just um, continue off of that, very excited to run this. Like this really came from that Reddit, like the discussion, um, just the interest in ADHD is in the tech space. And we wanted to, yeah, run this for you so you can ask your questions. We're going to be sending out the replay of this as well. We're also hosting the second one Sunday morning, early afternoon, depending on your time zone, 11 a.m. PST, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. So you feel free to join that again, especially if you have follow-up questions. Um, and like I said, at the end, we're going to share some tips on how to consistently have focus without having to be in a hyper-focus mode. Um, very lastly, so from the Reddit discussion, we actually are starting to lay plans to create, uh, whether it's a program or a course, just more resources for you. And that's really all going to be based on boosting your product productivity and focus at work. So you can excel at your career in tech. And yeah, so if that interests you, just type your name and email in the chat and we'll keep you updated of what, what comes from that. Um, cause it's really just going to be developed for you. Okay, let's get started. We have some pre-submitted questions here. So we're going to start with them. We uh, have a few. And as we're reading off these pre-selected questions, you, it gives you time to put in the chat your question. You're all, you can also ask your question verbally and just use the raise hand feature. And then we'll call upon you and you can unmute or you can type it in. So that's how we're going to work through this. Uh, this is also our first live AMA, so bear with us. It's fun, and uh, <laughs> we could run into two possible ums and ahs, and uh, yeah, we have a few awkward silences. All right, our first pre-sentence question was, and we heard this quite a few, to be honest, from Reddit and from a few others, is how can you consistently motivate yourself at work and stop yourself from going on social media when you work from home and have weekly check-ins. And I think with the weekly check-ins, it sounds like they have like weekly metrics, like kind of like, what did you do this past week is, is my guess. Um, Ingrid, do you want to start with this one of your tips on it? Yeah. So like just, just in general, uh, like, uh, people in tech have like these stand-up meetings. So just every day, pretty much people talk about, uh, what they're working on, what they're about to work on and any other issues. Right. So, uh, that's definitely, uh, so in terms of like, uh, how I would approach this, uh, generally, uh, the biggest distraction in my life is definitely my phone and like, and always kind of going to it, especially recently. Uh, I've been always like, uh, just talking, talking to friends, just browsing social media and things like that. But, uh, one of the biggest things that, uh, kind of helped a lot for me with, uh, first one, first one's, uh, pretty normal, like, getting rid of uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok. That's uh, that's that's probably what like the top two uh, apps that have been distracting me a lot. And you can check like uh, in your, uh, I don't know, iPhone or Android and you see like what usage you have for each app, right? So uh, just take like the top two ones if it's not like something that's super important and you can like, kind of test like uh, whether you can uh, remove that from your life. So Instagram, TikTok, I don't think anyone's going to, pass out if they, they if they don't have it for a couple of days it's a good way to test uh if 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 you have like a slight addiction just to just to those two apps and then um another thing that's kind of weird uh i'm not, I'm not sure if I, anyone else would uh, find this helpful but i actually turned my phone like black and white so uh something about like the vibrant colors on phones and things like that uh makes it like extra addicting uh to look at so definitely like switching it to black and white makes it less interesting to look at your phone yeah just in general so that that helps a lot a lot too and then um another thing is uh if i'm really getting into like some deep work and deep uh like especially when if i have a coding problem and i really have to get into uh the problem and really dive deep into it i just throw my phone into the other room i i set my um i set my alerts to like only allow for like important people to call me so like my parents or my sisters or someone or like 
just calls in general, but like texts and things, I don't, I don't uh, allow like alerts or anything to go off on those. So like I put it in on the other room, so I don't, um, I, I officially don't have to like pay attention to my phone and then just dive, dive right into, 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 into work, right? So, and um, uh, the final tip, I guess, uh, I use like the Pomodoro technique a lot, uh, which is, I don't know if, if most people are familiar with that, but it's, it's basically like a timer where, uh, I usually do like a 40 minute on and like five, 10 minutes off. So like you turn it on for 40 minutes and then, and then, um, you work, you work as hard as you can for those 40 minutes without any distractions. And then, uh, you take a break for like five, 10 minutes and it, there's, there's some scientific, uh, like evidence that backs that up. But like w when you do that, when you do like short, like long bursts and then short breaks, uh, you're able to like work a, a little bit longer and, uh, and a little bit further. Right. So. Those are my, my general tips that I have based on my experience. I really. love those tips. And you remind me of the black and white on my phone. I used to do that as well. Um, yeah. It's super, super helpful because I was just yeah. not interested in my phone. The bad part is when you do want to look at color and you have to like switch it on. And, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Which you can make it as like a shortcut. Um, yeah, great, great tips. I love Pomodoro technique as well. Some that I've been experimenting with lately because I really fell off of having structure and getting like into some deep work and just like product productive time spans. Um, I was kind of off of that for a while and getting back into it was quite hard. So I very recently as in like a couple of days ago started uh, tracking my time again. So literally every minute of the day I track and I find this really, really effective not to do it all the time, but maybe for a week span to get back into, um, into just, being cognizant of where your time's going. So there's right, times yeah. where I will scroll social media, but then I'm writing it down. It's like, wow, I was on Instagram for 30 minutes. And I found it helpful to write that down because instead of being like, oh, I just wasted time and kind of like throwing the towel, I'm like, okay, this is a fact. And I could see it for what it was. It's like, awesome. I wasted 30 minutes. That's okay. I can now move forward. It just helped me have that space. It's like that pause to then choose intentionally what I wanted to work on or what needed to get worked on or needed to be done next. Um, yeah. So I found, I've been finding that very, very helpful just tracking every minute of my day um, and just seeing where my time goes. The other thing, as I look over to it that I just got last week from Amazon for like 10 bucks is a clock, a light like clock with even like a timer on it and everything. I don't have a clock in my home until that one. So I was always reaching for my phone to see the time. And right. as soon as I reach for my phone, I'm then like, it's just a pure like habit and addiction to just swipe, to start clicking. Even though there's nothing I want to check because I'd like to delete my social media apps. I'm still yeah. just on it and just randomly. It's like, a, yeah, it's like mindless activity at yes, some point. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. so ingrained in us and it is meant to yeah. be addicting. So yeah. I got myself a clock and it has been amazing. Um, I actually forgot my phone at home the other day when I went out and I was like this is amazing I right. don't have my phone for once it felt quite liberating so get a clock <laughs> if you don't have one yes. um the other kind of big thing that <laughs> this is more of a long-term solution is well our phones are meant and social media is meant to be addicting it really is and this could mean, you know, maybe deleting your profiles in general or, or I mean, your apps right off the phone, but also realizing it's like, why am I reaching for it? Often it's because we want to numb, maybe avoid feeling something in our body. Maybe it's avoiding doing something hard. Maybe it's avoiding, you know, social interaction, like face to face when we can do that instead to get that, um, you know, social dopamine hit. So getting, this is something I did as well. I was getting really curious. Why am I reaching for my phone and wanting to scroll? Often it was because it was numbing, some sort of numbing behavior. The other thing was like, I really was craving social interaction and this need to be like seen and to feel connected to people. So what I did, I started joining communities and like in real life communities and having like weekly times that were commitments that I would see people in real life and then mm -hmm. working through other things um, on my own. So I wasn't reaching for numbing behavior. So that was another thing that's been really helping me. Yeah, no, that's all for sure. It, yeah. It just, yeah.
think do, do, do. and if you're just joining us if you have a question just raise your hand uh, then we'll invite you to either unmute or type in your question um but we are going to yeah if you have a question you're welcome to raise your hand um we're also going to go into another pre-selected question but if you have a question yeah raise your hand and you we can uh call on you next or type it in uh, type it in is okay too yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. Okay. And also, I don't think we mentioned at the start, you guys are all in focus mode, which means you can't see each other. So if your video is off, no one else can see you except for us. So it's a nice way to stay focused and not get distracted by other videos. All right. So the other question we had here is, how do I absorb verbal information such as in meetings when I easily get distracted by emails, random thoughts, or other tasks? And they go on to say, just simply processing multiple input streams at the same time, then converting it into internal concepts and reasoning about them and then responding is very difficult. What tips do you have? Do you want to do a start with that one? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, meetings in general, they can go by pretty fast sometimes. And uh, like the, the, the best I could do is uh, take as many notes as possible and ask questions. Uh, I, I think a lot of uh, people, especially with ADHD, that feel like they're always behind constantly during uh, meetings are a little bit timid and uh, don't try to stop the whole meeting just to ask their own questions. But sometimes it's good to interrupt and slow down the meeting if it is going too fast and just ask the questions that, that you have along the way so that everyone, it, it benefits everyone, right? Like if, if you're, especially if you're a developer and you're you're not following exactly what's, what's going on, like you're just going to waste time after the meeting and ask, ask questions anyways, right? So uh, just honestly, just like raising your hand, uh, pausing the meeting, asking more questions and taking notes as much as possible uh, and asking the questions that you need to ask uh, while you're having a pause, right? So, and then, um, yeah, it's like, honestly, just uh, it's sl slowing down the meeting is what, what, what helps me a lot. Um, It's so funny because as you're, the first part you say, like taking notes, I always have paper and pen with me to take notes. Um, When I was doing one-to-one -one client calls and coaching, for ADHD, I was always taking notes in meeting, like in calls with clients, even like such as this. Yeah. And I always did it in university and school, and people would always look at me weird as taking copious amounts of notes. But it really helped me listen and process what's being said. It's not that I'm just an um, what is it like, visual or audio learner or kinetic learner? Yeah. Am I all of them? They all help and support each other, at least for me. Um, so I personally yeah. just take a lot of notes and I know it benefits me. So there's no, absolutely no shame in taking notes if that feels good to you. Um, the other thing for this, this person who asks is like, just like big props for, um, knowing that you get distracted and that it's hard to absorb me, uh, like audio information. And that is like a, like a tip in itself or like, uh, a strategy in itself, because if you're like, I get distracted by emails in meetings just shut everything off of your computer like close all your tabs or shut yeah. it down and tell yourself like i'm just going to be present in this meeting like don't try and multitask um there's times when i've been in meetings i'm like oh i'll do like the dishes while i'm in a meeting or like i don't know stretch or something or kind of look at my emails and i just know like i'm not yeah. going to retain information or be able to take that in yeah, so especially I maybe... when someone else is especially when someone else is talking like it's very easy to just kind of do something else and yeah yeah, yeah, it's right. so easy, especially if you have ADHD, to just your your brain's working on so many different levels to just do something else, right? Because you're good at that. You're good at multiple brain functions happening at once and multitasking or what we tell ourselves. Um, so knowing that, be like, okay, I'm just going to focus on this one thing. And if it helps, this is also going to strengthen your brain to be able to focus on that one thing. Um, so yeah, knowing that you're distracted make conscious effort to just be present in that meeting, take a lot of notes, at least that's worked for myself. Um, and also with the responding, there's times someone will ask me a question, I'm like, oh, I, I didn't write that down. I don't know what you're actually saying. I literally just ask them to repeat it or if they can type it in the chat, if it's a virtual meeting or I'll take a moment to write down or just ask, I need a moment to respond because most people can't just answer a question really thoughtfully right off the go <laughs> like they need to process it um so it's yeah I think it's something that everyone else would appreciate too 
as we're yeah, uh, like, I'm sure. just like asking questions right away. And Corinna's like, what do you think on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no time a... to think on the response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me more uh, time to think. <laughs> yeah, that was fine. Uh, okay. So if anyone has any questions uh, with Karnak here, oh, sorry. There we go. Yes. Uh, Anchor, would you like to read the question this time? Yeah, sure. Uh, don't know if this is uh, behavioral typical of ADHD. However, if there's a meeting scheduled in 1.5 hours after work starts, my brain goes into a waiting mode where I kind of wait till after the meeting to get into any assigned tasks. Is this normal? Any tips to deal with this? Okay, I get what you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... If I'm understanding correctly, so if like say you're you start your work day at 9 a.m. and there's a meeting at 10 30, you're kind of like, <laughs> there's not much I can do. Um, I don't want to get started into a task, so I'm just going to wait for the meeting and then get started into task. Um, I right away I thought of almost the inverse in a way. Well, not really the inverse, but similar but different. If I have a meeting at like five, five o'clock and I start my work day at like nine, <laughs> the whole day, I'm like, I it's like I can't do anything else because I'm waiting for this thing to happen because in my brain, when I have nothing scheduled later, it feels like infinite amount of time. Right. I just, my yeah. sense of time is really skewed. So in my personal case, with like this scenario where it's a small chunk of time, like usually under two hours. I love it because I don't waste time on tasks and it really helps me focus because I'm like, it's like that looming deadline, right? Like we're really good at procrastinating, getting stuff done at the last minute. So I'm like, cool, I have an hour and a half and I try to take a task that I set afternoon or all day for and get it done that amount of time. And I'm really, really freaking effective um, and productive in that because I'm not overthinking or second guessing. I'm just like, this is the deadline, got to get done. So maybe a pro you can try approaching it that way. You're like, cool, I'm going to take a big task and see if how much or if I, I can get done or all of it. And if you're like, I know this is like a multiple hour task or multiple day task, why don't you play a game with yourself being like, cool, I'm going to challenge myself to focus on this task for an hour and a half and then switch tasks for the meeting and switch tasks back to this project, right? That task switching is really difficult. Getting to that hyper focus is really difficult. So why not make it a game of like, cool, let's just see. Let's just see if I can prove to myself that I can get some stuff down in that hour and a half before the meeting. And then we're going to switch back to it after the meeting. Um, I like to play a lot of games with like with myself like that because when you make it a bit more fun and kind of, you know, a little, a little spicier, right? <laughs> Our brains like that. Um, so yeah, let me know if that resonates. Inker, I'd love to hear what, uh, what your thoughts are on this. No, I agree. And the, it's a great question. Like, uh, it's definitely something I resonate with a lot too. Like, even for like this meeting, this like thinking about it throughout the day is, is it a distraction in itself? Like, okay, I have to prepare, like we have to go, go over some things or whatever. Right. But uh, what helps a lot is just sticking true to your uh, like your schedule, right? Like I'm sure that most meetings don't come up just randomly, right? And actually like putting it in your calendar, what you're going to work on right before the meeting helps a lot, right? Exactly what you're going to do, what you're going to work on. So as soon as work starts, you jump into that task. And once the meeting rolls around, you can take like a, you don't have to go the whole uh, one and a half hours, right? You can just take a break one, one hour in and then, okay, now you're just waiting for the meeting, right? Because most people don't do much in like the last 30 minutes before a meeting anyways right so yeah if you if, if you just like get really strict with it like I, I feel like people really underestimate how uh how useful actually scheduling what you're going to do is like like um so, so some days I, I'll, I'll wake up and I, I don't know what to do and that in itself is is just wasting time right so if like usually what I like to do is night before I plan out what I'm going to do for the like the rest of the day and uh and plan out like little blocks of time exactly what i'm going to do and then and uh, once you wake up when you when you're especially when you're like first up in the morning is when you can get like most of your workout well for me anyways i like first thing in the morning i go for like a, a run and then like right after that i'm always like that's like my ideal time to start working so whatever work i can schedule in i i have to focus on that and then and then when once the meeting rolls around it's already something i scheduled so 
it, it it doesn't become that big of a deal. But yeah, like the biggest thing is for sure, like actually scheduling, scheduling your work. Yeah, that's it. All right. Do you have, does that um, resonate? Do you have any follow-up questions? We'd love to hear. Garth, thank well, you. I'm, I'm going to try that out, I guess. Uh, I got, so you said, uh, you know, make gamify it a bit. That was one. And then I guess schedule and plan ahead for that hour or two hours. Uh, I mean, I think most of us use Jira, so that's an easy way. Just pull those yeah. Jira numbers and, and put them in a, in a tracker somewhere. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And just to add to that, because this is something I, I'm constantly reminding myself of, um, you're, we're all human with ADHD or not like we can't operate like a robot every day it's not like every day is going to be perfectly scheduled and you're in perfectly productive and yeah exactly. you're gonna have perfect yeah. energy like it just doesn't work like that especially if you're female and our hormones our hormone cycles over a 30-day period or roughly 30 days versus um males who are a day cycle so different parts of the day different like no days in the month it's gonna look different like the last couple of days I was absolutely mentally and physically exhausted like I was on my phone scrolling like no tomorrow and I was like no matter what I could try to do I was like nothing's working so I'm just like this is going to be a day that is not going to be a mentally heavy focused day and I'm going to do other things that don't require that as much as I can and then knowing that that's not for the rest of my life. I know it's only going to be like a couple of days and I'll know when my brain's ready to do more like uh, more uh, like challenging cognitive tasks, which is like today. It felt great. So just being really kind with yourself. If you're like, wow, I wasted an hour and a half. It's like, it's no big deal. Like, just notice that. Don't ruminate on it. It's in the past. It's done. And just moving forward with, uh, you know, what what energy you have for the day to, yeah, complete any tasks you need to. What a great okay. question. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'll try and do those things, see how it works. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to give you some suggestions at the end, a little challenge on how to start to implement these uh, things into your life. So anyone else on live have any questions? You can raise your hand and then we can, uh, yeah, call upon you. And yeah, as we're giving you guys a moment, we do have some more pre-selected questions too that we'll be switching in and out here. Well, I had another question. Uh, again, I don't know because I was diagnosed very recently and uh, so most of my life I've been living with this without knowing I guess but I do I don't know if it's a programmer thing or ADHD thing but I I don't fall asleep till like one o'clock I don't know if there is a way around that this isn't specifically ADHD programmer thing but is there a way to to work with that or, or fall asleep or try and sleep at a more regular time I guess Oh, I love talking about sleep. I absolutely love this. And Steve, give it's a all... thumbs up. I'm hoping this means it's like also a similar question or maybe Steve has some tips. Either way, let us know. Uh, Ingrid, do you want to start with this one? Oh, yeah, no, I just want to, I want to agree. Like it's definitely like, I, I personally like was able to kind of fix it, but it's definitely a programmer thing or like software, software man's thing. Uh, like all, all, pretty much all my- What have you all, done? Yeah. <laughs> all, all, my, all my coworkers, they're like, they're like uh they're working like in the middle of the night and stuff like that too so i'm like i don't know i don't know how they how they figured it out we wake up like start work at like nine o'clock but they went, went to sleep at like four sometimes i'm like what the heck but uh yeah like i i definitely uh, especially the past year have been focusing a lot on sleep sleep is probably like one of the biggest things biggest factors of like your like just general quality of life right so uh, focusing on sleep is definitely should be a priority for everyone just just in just in general just not like ADHD stuff right and it, it'll it'll benefit like like multiple levels of, of your life especially when it comes to focus and for me it was just getting into uh, a routine um I know I know it's like if like no matter no matter whether it's like weekday or weekend I wake up exactly the same time at seven o'clock I wake up in the morning I I do a run or do like some sort of exercise. And then by the time nine rolls around, I'm ready to work. And that, that goes for like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every day. So like 
you really have to get into the schedule of of building that habit of going to sleep at around 10 or 11. Uh, you can play around with how much time you think you need for sleep. So everyone's kind of different, but like you should at least go get um a good solid like six hours of sleep at, at, the, at the bare minimum. Like I don't think any humans, I know people say that they can, they can operate on like four hours, but like you you definitely need like you may not you may not like immediately feel it but like eventually that'll catch up to you if you sleep less than six hours so at bare minimum six seven hours and and i and i also got like a, a fitbit it it kind of tells you like uh it helps you track um like your sleep cycles and stuff like that like how much uh deep sleep how much REM sleep you're getting as well so uh when, once you once you have that it, it, and it kind of makes it like a a kind of a game like a you, you there's like an app that goes along with the fitbit so like it is it's, it's like a, it's not a game but like it, it's it's nice seeing like the numbers like uh like okay i i got like seven hours of, i averaged like seven hours of sleep this week and last week uh i got like five hours so like you're like improving right like you're improving another aspect of your life and that and i don't know for me at least it, it, it makes it like more enjoyable trying to at least seeing those numbers once i wake up right it's it's like almost like the first thing i look at too like how good was my sleep so so, so it's a combination of all those things building that habit of going to sleep early and uh waking up whenever whatever time uh fits you best and like actually getting those six seven hours and uh, tracking it with uh, like a fitbit or uh, uh whatever, whatever other options that you guys can find online Ooh, i love the i love 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 all these tips um i love talking about sleep um sad to you like seeing the numbers kind of like i think in like adhd in general and even just for us being humans is when we can see something on paper like numbers or facts it gets us out of our head right you can tell yourself oh i guess i slept enough or like maybe i slept too much or am i supposed to really supposed to get this much but when you see it on numbers you're like oh yeah i did sleep pretty good like it really solidifies that fact um yeah. so yeah i agree with <laughs> being able to see your sleep time uh, so sleep is something I've done a ton of research in since probably like 2015. Um, I've been up until, I guess, I don't know, 2016, 2017-ish time. I've like insomnia, like terrible insomnia most of my life. I just couldn't sleep. And it would change based on like the year season of my life. It's like maybe I couldn't fall asleep, couldn't stay asleep, didn't get good quality sleep. Like it was just all over the place. And I still will fall into that now and then, but I've essentially healed it all. Um, one thing I've learned recently is that sleep also like the solution for sleep and routines, there's general facts and strategies that do that are so tried and true and work, but it's also still very personalized. And what I've, I can't believe, and it's more of an assumption and is that our sleep patterns are built from like childhood because I mean, our brain's still developing up until I think we're about 14, actually even, I think still in, even up to like early twenties. So as a kid, if you just stayed up and like say gamed into the evening and that was like totally fine, it's like, you're already building sleep habits and patterns like way, you know, way long ago that your circadian rhythm is probably just like, Oh, that's just normal. That's just what we do. We go to bed at 1am. We're not tired before then. And then also just thinking from an ADHD brain, it's like, I find I'm really productive at night because it's like this weird, like time thing where you're like, I need to go to bed right away. I'll just stay up and like keep working because it's like that looming deadline, but then you get into a good focus or hyper focus and you just keep going. So like Ingrid said, the big thing is really creating like strong self boundaries around sleep. It's like I go to bed at this time every night and that will automatically, you know, wake you up at, you know, the same time every morning. Uh, I'm going to challenge the six hours of sleep to minimum of seven hours. I know yeah. tons of studies have been done that like below seven, you'll see short term and long term um cognitive and health declines especially over the long term it's a huge increase in your risk of diseases and just think when you get less sleep it it has takes a big impact on your your nervous system it's a stressor on your body so i mean stress whole you know that plays a lot of functions in our life you know it affects your immunity your recovery your cognitive ability so it's like if you want to do your best every day and be like mentally sharp having lots of energy phys feeling good also it's going to help with you know managing appetite and weight loss if that's your goal then yeah seven hours minimum i currently set my alarm for nine hours every night and that's like a standard i don't do anything less than that which means i'm usually sleeping about eight and a half um yeah. that feels good to me uh yeah i wake up 
usually before my alarm. Um, so I would say challenge yourself to get more sleep, a little bit more every night, uh, just knowing that sleep's your friend. Um, back to the actionable tips, though. Blocking blue light is huge. So sleep is all regulated by your circadian rhythm, which is a hormonal function. So if you're on screens at night, that's totally fine. But get like 100% blue blocking glasses. There's like 10 bucks on Amazon. I wear them every night, two hours before bed. And then you can be on your computer, watch TV, do whatever, have your lights on and your least blocking blue light. I actually have 30% blue blockers on now. Um, so I have a bunch of different like strengths I wear throughout the day. Um, so blocking blue light and then getting blue light, real daylight into your eyes as soon as you wake up. So open up your curtains, your blinds, um, get outside if you can, just getting that um, blue light right away so your body stops producing melatonin. So big thing, strong sleep uh, routine, like in current said, like that's going to be key. Um, even if you're feeling productive, just like, nope, strong self boundaries. This is my bedtime. Blocking blue light is going to be huge as well. And don't eat right before bed either. That's really going to interrupt sleep too. Um, then we have ooh, another question. Yeah. Does that answer your question, um, about sleep? Do you have any follow-up questions on that? Uh, no, it's just sometimes, yeah, like you said, it's hard to put down the, close the laptop and go to sleep. <laughs> I got to work on that. I mean, something I tell myself is actually have it on my whiteboard up here. It's like, the world can't be saved in one day. Like you need to rest your body and your mind. Or you can be like, the work will always be there. It's time you rest your body and mind, right? Like, you know, yeah. you could keep working. It's not going to go anywhere. You got to work on it tomorrow. So give your body the rest it needs, right? So it can operate optimally tomorrow. And you're really setting yourself up for like long-term health. Uh, sleep is like the pillar for everything you want in your life because you you know if you don't have energy mentally or physically then how are you gonna be able to you know conquer those things right mm -hmm. yep. let's normalize hey. nine hours of sleep every night guys <laughs> uh anything else we want to add on about sleep at all or follow-up questions Excellent. We have a question here. Ooh, this is a great question. So I actually just spoke to this question in the email I sent out yesterday to our main email list, which you probably wouldn't have gotten, I don't think. So is there any reason that you would say using meds is an optimal? Yeah. Okay. This, um, and if you want to type your email actually in the chat or your name, I can send you the email I sent out uh, talking, like talking specifically about this. And I'm going to be sending out uh, another email next week also. And, and the coming weeks is going to be a topic on, you know, what are natural strategies and solutions? Like, what does that actually mean? What does that look like? Why use them over meds? Can you still use meds? Yeah, you can totally send it privately. Yeah. Um, you yeah, send a private message or you can email me as well. I think you have the email for ADHD Wellness Co. So if you use meds or don't use meds, like we don't judge. You're welcome here. I believe that meds serve a purpose in your life. There's a reason you are led to meds and tried meds. So if you tried them and you, you know, regretted it, don't regret it. It played a role and you wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have tried. I tried meds and I what, like was searching for meds. I was like, I need something. I'm like failing at life right now. And I'm so glad I took meds because I would have never known, you know, how they would affect me, what, how they'd feel for me, what they would do if I wouldn't have tried them. I did not like them at all, but it also helped me honestly create a placebo effect for myself. It's like, if I can do this on meds, then let's see if I can do this without them, like starting to gamify it. So how I look at meds is that, and this is something I'll share at the end too, is Meds are very much focused on like the brain, right? We can get for like the balance chemicals and wiring in our brain. Um, and a lot of like the tips we're sharing today are very brain focused. It's like, these are tips and tricks, you know, so use Pomodoro technique, set timers for when to go to bed, block um, blue light, very surface level things that are very effective. But when we only focus on those things in a way to manage ADHD and be more productive and be more focused and excel at your career, we miss out on so many other effective strategies that make a 
a greater impact in our ADHD management and last longer term. So you're not constantly looking for like a better checklist or like, you know, that next hack of like, you, I don't know, what's another one we often use? I feel like timers is a common one, checklists, just general hacks. And that is really about coming back to a holistic approach and coming back to things that involve like your body. So uh, I sent this in the email too, which is about, you know, our endocrine system, our immune system, our nervous system, and how they all interact and have a huge, play a huge part. So when we're only taking meds, we're not taking that holistic approach and holistic meaning you as a person, as a whole person, you are hundred percent unique. Everything in your life is unique to, to you. So this means like you just general stress, that's going to have a huge impact on your ADHD. I mean, we just talked about sleep, your nutrition, including your digestion and absorption of the food you eat, um, movement, you know, that can be like focused exercise or just moving your body. Um, that's another big one uh, in there. That's kind of the main four. I'll talk about the end too. So when we only focus on meds as a solution, Often we don't even worry about the other things. We're like, whatever meds are getting me by, I feel fantastic. You know, I'm getting stuff done because society tells me I need to be productive and get this much stuff done. But then we miss out on all of these other strategies that are so effective if we would just give them more awareness and more, you know, more attention, if that makes sense. Um, also, I've heard from a lot of people, this is true for myself, that like I did not like meds. I knew it was something I did not want to be on long term. Um, so if you're thinking long term, it's like, do I want to be reliant on meds for the rest of my life? Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, so why not start building those longer term strategies? The more I talk with people who, myself included, who either are weaning off meds or don't use meds anymore or don't use them at all, and they've incorporated these four things, which is sleep, stress management, um, consistent movement, uh, nu good nutrition and digestion, like they're managing really well, like really, really well. So um, that is my take on it. I can send you that email that I sent out and more to come on that as well. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Do you have any follow-up questions on that? And Ingrid, I'd also love to hear your take on this too. If you, uh, yeah, if anything to add in your own experience. Uh, not really to be honest. I, I don't really have any experience with, uh, meds and stuff like that. So I, I, and I don't know, Ingrid, if like it's something you've looked at. I mean, I know you're not officially diagnosed, but like everything yeah. you're doing in your life is just like, it's so great. Like you're moving your body every morning, which is something I advocate for, you know, getting sleep every night at the same time, which I advocate for, like having great systems set up in your life for, you know, focus work and productivity, which also then is going to help keep your stress low. So you're like, oh. I know I'm like, have my day set up. I know what I'm doing. I know I'm going to be able to get the work done I need to. Um, so it sounds like you're doing a lot of really great things. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of it's just like, uh, especially past year, it's like just self-improvement stuff, right? So it's just in general, just trying to get better. And that like kind of, it just it just trickles down to fixing a lot of <laughs> issues that, I, that, 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 I, that I've been having. Right? So yeah, just take, take care of yourself, try to improve every day. And yeah kind of like an onion once you start peeling back the layers you're like yeah. a lot of layers and that's a beautiful yeah. thing it's it's you know what being human is <laughs> it's a journey um yeah. so you had a follow-up question yes if you want to mute i so i don't know your first name but if you want to mute go uh go ahead here i, I think they're gonna type it out and i guess they want us to, oh, to type going. perfect uh yeah. okay yeah i can i can just ask it oh yeah oh, all, right, all right cool um yeah so I have tried the holistic approach, but um, there are some things that I feel like I wouldn't be able to do without medication. It's not like something that is necessary for in like your day to day work life or just your day to day life in general. But it's like a benefit that I can see when I'm using medication. So like, for example, if I'm like reading a lot of code for like 30 minutes, I'm like switching through files and just like reading in general doesn't have to be code. Um, I feel like maybe like 30% of that time I'm actually like perceiving what I'm reading where like my brain is actually interpreting it. Uh, and like 70% of the time it's just like glossing over the information. But uh, when I'm using medication, I feel like I'm like actively reading the whole time, which is like 
even if I do a lot of like if I work out a lot and like produce a lot of dopamine and do some stuff like that I still won't be able to get that effect without it which I feel maybe I'm not sure if other people like normal people are able to do that but I feel like I haven't been able to do it yeah Ingrid do you have anything to add to this because I don't read code so I feel like you may have first-hand stuff and I do have some ideas too I mean just reading uh, in general like okay yeah. Yeah. Oh no, but I definitely, uh, I definitely feel that a lot. Like sometimes, especially when you're flipping through like different folders and different files, and trying to find like the root cause of whatever whatever you're looking for, you you can get lost pretty easily. And yeah, I, I, I don't know how it feels to take any like medication. And but I I do resonate with uh, like what you're saying. Like you're, you're feeling like like you're taking in like 30 percent or whatever 40 percent of like what you're actually flipping through and then and then and then you have to like I some, yeah sometimes I have to like honestly go back and forth like uh with like to the same file read the same things over and over again right so yeah I, I, for me I feel like it's like a very common thing I don't, I don't know if anyone else experiences that as well but yeah the, in terms of solution I, I, I guess it's medication would make you a lot more efficient but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I would need to be that level of efficient. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't want to. Uh, I. Uh, it's hard to say, like, without actually experiencing what it feels like. like I definitely have, yeah, some suggestions here. But Kardec, I know you unmuted. If you have anything to share or even ask, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I mean, I I echo the same thing, uh, which the I don't know the name, but as the speaker said, and which is I've I've. I work days without meds and with meds because uh, I I just started on meds maybe twelve weeks ago, and, and it I, I think it's 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 like if I were to put it in video games, it just the setting goes from veteran to easy. Um, okay. Whatever I'm doing, it, it gets easier because uh, like just using the code thing, following the code. Sometimes we're uh, either following code, we go flip through multiple projects because there's calls from multiple projects. Um, my working memory is very important for that, right? I'm like, okay, I got to follow the trail. Um, it's much easier when I'm medicated. I mean, it, to the point where probably two or three times easier. Um, without it, it's I have to sometimes do the same steps over and over. And I'm finding that I solve a problem and then you know I have to reinvent it because I forgot what I did just two, three weeks ago, but now it's, it's, I'm like, yeah, I, I pick up where I left off. So it, it, I, I do see the, um, during work hours, the difference it makes. And I think putting it so, uh, concretely, it's, it's just the working memory and that brain fog. If those two things are gone, um, it, it makes my job much easier. Yeah. Um, so I'm not in tech. So what the examples I'm going to give you, I think, will hopefully still still resonate and work um the big thing i've learned and this is still you know taking a holistic approach is like by holistic meaning you as a person a unique person as a whole is finding my own way to do things and unapologetically doing it that way so i that's i'm gonna say very like first like if i'm reading a book any sort of book I personally don't read a lot of books. I'll listen to audio because I just know I can take in it better that way. So if that's ever an option for you, that's one. Um, just knowing how you can take in information the best way. If it's something I'm really trying to learn, again, I'll listen and take notes. Or if I'm reading something like a book, if I, you know, I am, then I'm scribbling in the book. I'm writing notes. I'm saying what I learned out loud. And yes, maybe I'm going through it slower, but I'm retaining it better. Now, I, what it sounds like, for say reading code, um, I'm gonna relate it to when I'm doing say research online because then I'm reading yeah, stuff that's, and that, that's a good comparison, yeah. Yeah, and it exhausts me so much. I will gloss over information. I'll get so tired and and just like there, I can't focus. It burns me out really quickly. Um, so if I were to take meds, yeah, I could do that easily. But since I don't, how I have learned to work with this is, first of all, I know that. I know my patterns. I know if I'm just researching or looking stuff online, it is, yeah, I'm going to zone out, gloss over it, and it's going to, I'm going to need like a nap. So one way I do it, I'll say things out loud. I'll like talk to myself. I'll read it to myself. 
especially if it's something like, I know Kardec, you said this, and I have this too, where I'll be doing something so focused on it one day and the next day I'm like, what was I doing? I'm like trying to find that train of thought. So I'll literally kind of rewrite up what I was doing yesterday and like little paragraph like a summary and I'll talk out loud as I do it and that jogs my memory right away so say I was like I'm planning a podcast episode right now and then I was like I don't remember anything I'll just try and like test myself I'm like okay I'm gonna write out what I remember from yesterday say it out loud and then right away I'm like oh I'm back in into it so this concept of like testing my memory of just like starting to write just writing stuff down keeps my brain active and saying it out loud really helps Again, if I'm reading and researching, same thing. I'm talking out loud and I'm asking myself the question. I'm like, hey, what do I need to know now? What do I need to know now? Ooh, and I'll like find something and I'll literally just be engaging with the content. I'm trying to stimulate my brain by like asking questions as I'm finding the answer um, or anything to keep my brain active. And the other thing I know you mentioned, like you, you're working out a lot. This is something I realized recently. I used to always work out in the morning. But then I still wasn't focused all day. And we know like, you know, movement and exercise, it helps. So I've changed it to just constant movement throughout the day. So if I'm like, whoa, like I'm just glossing over movement break right away, movement break, whether I'm going to go for like a five minute walk outside, do jumping jacks for like two minutes, you know, something like dance around your house, like something to move my body and get back into my body and out of this like numbed gloss over brain state really really helps so I'm taking lots of little breaks um just to like move my body connect to my body essentially that's something I'll share at the end um I was making notes let me go back to notes so that really really helps so talking out loud if you can listen to something um testing yourself with like a summary just to get your brain active movement breaks um and then, yeah, just working with that, like for myself, because I know that I don't take on tasks that I know are going to be reading or research heavy. So, I mean, if that is your job, you're encoding, it's probably a, a critical thing, but maybe within your job world, maybe there's a role you can take on that includes less of that, or you can do it in collaboration with someone. I don't know exactly, but if you know that about yourself, you're like, oh, well, maybe I don't have to do this as much as I'm doing it right now. Could be an option. Yeah. Does that give you some ideas? Do you have any follow-up questions at all? Also, just to, just to add real quick, uh, yeah. uh, another thing, like, uh, uh, it reminded me when you said brain fog, but uh, just like diet in general, um, especially in the morning, uh, like for, for me to be able to focus, uh, I, I really don't eat like any carbs or really, I don't, I don't really eat breakfast in general. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's recommended for like mo most people, but like, for, like, I, I think it, it's, it's very common for like people to not eat breakfast and just like fast in the morning. And uh, all I have is really like, uh, this water and, uh, like black coffee and stuff. So, uh, just, just keeping carbs away from me also helps me focus a lot more. It, it keeps the brain fog away and just like, so you got kind of pretty sharp, especially in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Like digestion that. and nutrition. So nutrition, digestion yeah. of the food you're eating is huge i recently cut out uh gluten and dairy and i feel really good so i yeah. and i do know there's a lot of science and we'll, i'll be sharing more of that actually to come in in the emails i'm sending out too um and i've also found like if you do big meal it's gonna make me more tired now eating for say a female body and like how that acts with their hormones versus male i find there's a lot of differences but playing around with your nutrition if you're like I'm yeah. always eating the same things every day to make it a game like let's just try something different see if there's an effect i love the experiment it just keeps it fun and light and really there's no harm in it yeah for sure yeah let's know if that answers if you have any follow-up questions at all oh, give me a moment there okay so um and if you do have any follow-up questions just just let us know. We can raise your hand. We just being cognizant of time. We're going to transition out of the ask me anything portion. If more questions come up, please join us on Sunday, April 14th. So it's 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love to have you. You can also pre-submit your questions. Um, you can use the Calendly, which will, you'll get an email with that again, I believe. Yes. Uh, you can also just email us directly. Um, we'd be happy to answer them. And also, like we said at the beginning, like the 
uh, Reddit thread just sparked a lot of discussion, which led to this, which honestly was a ton of fun. You guys have great, great questions. Love hearing this and even just reflecting on stuff that's worked for us and things that maybe we've struggled with, um, which we are now going to be creating uh, a course or program, some additional resources for you. So if you were and it will be a we'll have a paid program for that. We are going to do a podcast coming out shortly as well, which will of course be free. But if you're interested in that, just drop your name and email in the chat. You can send to us directly if you want to stay updated on that. It's all going to be focused on focus on productivity to boost your career in, in tech with ADHD. So like I said, I wanted to give you some extra value here at the end of just long-term solutions for boosting productivity without always having to be in a hyper-focus mode. Um, and also just a challenge to implement what you learned today. I said a lot of this already, so I'm going to be pretty brief with it. But when I was mentioning that we're focusing on these brain-focused tasks, um, a hack, sorry, and learn tips and tricks, which work, but we really need to combine them with what I call is just connecting to your body. So these are things that, what I call the four core, they're the core pillars. They are, you know, nutrition, good digestion, stress management, which is a lot of stress, um, nervous system regulation. So that's number two. Number three is sleep. So quality sleep. And number four is movement. It can be exercise or just general movement. So when we put our focus on those four things, which all have to do with the body, that those four I've seen have the greatest impact in managing ADHD and having life feel so much more like peaceful, satisfying, and like easeful. Like, yes, productivity and focus. Yeah, we're human. It's still going to be hard at times, but it's like giving us the mental space and the to be intentional of, you know, like, okay, I haven't focused the last five hours. Cool. We're going to change that. It just like helps us have more empowerment in our life when we implement those four things. Now, if someone told me that, like, cool, exercise more, eat better, sleep more, and manage your stress, like, fantastic, that is hard in its own. Um, I mean, sticking to exercise consistently can be a real struggle for someone for their, like, it could be a lifetime struggle. Good sleep can be a lifetime struggle, as it was for me. So the one thing I really want you to focus on for the next 14 days, 14 days, nice timeline, feels really doable on our minds, is to find one way to connect back to your body. Because like I said, all of those four things, the common theme is coming back to your body and just getting over your head. And I want you to have fun with this. So when I say connect to your body, I want you to think right now, and you can write this down, this helps you process the information like I always do, of what like activities, anything in your life do you do or have you done that gets you out of your head? Where you're like, kind of in a little flow state. Like, I'm just, I'm not second guessing it. I'm not thinking of like the shoulds. I'm not glossing over. I'm not zoning out. Like I'm present. I'm so present, but I'm just like at peace. I'm just in this like you know, kind of satisfied, nice state where I'm not ruminating or pinging all over. I'm just out of my head. That means you're probably in your body. Like you're feeling connected to what you're doing, but you're not zoning out. So it wouldn't be like gaming or or like scrolling social media, you're like, I may not be in my head, but that's more of a numbing. That's who you're tuning out versus tuning into your body. So think of like something you've done or multiple things or something you do consistently in your life that gets you your head. Um, for a lot of people, that's, you know, movement, like exercise, could be dance. Um, rock climbing specifically always seems to come up for a lot of people. Uh, it could be going out in nature, going for a walk, um, maybe going for a run. You know, Anchorin does that every morning. I mean, that's a great, great um, tactic to connect your body. It could be like belly breathing, could be meditation. Honestly, like it could be an orgasm. Those things are great. Um, anything that you're like, I'm not in my head. This is the thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's legit though. <laughs> So this is the thing I want you to focus on for 14 days. Like you need to make this an intentional, like conscious effort to incorporate that into your daily, your daily routine to do. This will just help you strengthen that connection that like you have a body and not just a mind. And so you can start to tap into these other four things that we mentioned 
to start to make ADHD management easier, to be more successful, to be more empowered with it. And that's really what we're here to help you do um, and have fun with it. Like if I said you have to work out at the gym an hour every day, like that sounds, that sounds atrocious. Like I don't even want to do that. So <laughs> have fun with this. This should, should be something you enjoy doing, at least when you start doing it. And that feels really good for you. So if you want to message us privately or directly what that thing is, we can hold you accountable. It'd be really great to hear what that thing that gets you out of your head is. Um, and for 14 days, that would be like April 23rd. We're going to write that down, put it uh, on your fridge, your whiteboard, on your reminder and your calendar to make an effort to do that every day. Um, five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, whatever feels good for you. The second part is I want you to pick one one thing you learned today, whether it's from a question you asked or someone else asked. Um, it can be anything that really resonates with you. And in that same 14-day time span, I want you to also implement it. So we have one thing we're implementing for our body and one thing we're implementing for our brain. So maybe that's like using Pomodoro technique or like I did, I bought myself a clock. It's been amazing. I love it. And tracking my time. So choose one thing and also write that down and and yes, like it's going to take a conscious effort to implement this, but you're only going to be focused on those two things over 14 days. And after that, you can choose if you want to continue for another 14 days with them or or try a different technique. So let us know how that sounds for you all. And if you want to DM us of what that is specifically, love to help you out with that. Um, and can you have anything to add to that or any things for yourself that you're that are coming up for you? things that you do for body and mind uh just in general yeah like yeah the running thing i do a lot uh definitely a lot of, like with weightlifting too like i try to go at least like every other day if i can uh yeah those are really those things i i try to i want to get into like more sports and more like competitive stuff too but uh yeah that's that's, that's not my thing at the moment <laughs> so, and do you like enjoy running do you enjoy going to the gym uh, I like, uh, I used to, I like weightlifting a lot. Like I've done that for a while, but uh, running was pretty recent. And uh, like, on a, like uh, I, I'm starting to enjoy it more now because uh, like initially, I, I honestly, I couldn't even run like two minutes without like, like gasping. <laughs> but now I can like run 30 minutes straight without like, without breaking a sweat. So, so like, just like that improvement, like it, it's always nice to see like numbers, seeing you, seeing yourself improve. And like that Fitbit as well, it, it tracks like, um, how long you run and and things like that as well right so it's it's just it's just nice now just i love that right yeah i uh movement and it's always been a part of my life and it's yeah it's something you can see yourself progress at the numbers and if you're weightlifting you're like oh but i'm not lifting more weight but you can look at like i did my reps slower like i was lifting that yeah, weight yeah. for like 50 seconds versus 45 like there's so many different numbers you can look at yeah one exactly. thing personally i've been playing with is um instead of trying to like lift more weight or do more reps or I do a lot of circus arts is like, can I engage my muscles more? Like, can I get even more in my body? Can I just like isolate my muscles more as I'm using them? And that just keeps me so in it for like hours. I'm like, okay, let's isolate this muscle and feel this and create this muscle tension. So it's like, have yeah, fun yeah. with it. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been using like cables a lot more too. And like that is a completely different feeling from like just free weights, right? So yeah, it's it, Especially nowadays, like I feel like when I was a few years ago, like uh, I I would force my body, like it's doing like a, one of those bigger X like squats and deadlifts and stuff, and and eventually I'm like like after a few like not major injuries, but like uh, nowadays I just try to just try to get to the gym and do a good solid workout without like injuring myself. That's like that's like a win for me nowadays. So like just I just want to be able to be in the gym, be in the gym as long as possible. So. Yeah, I better. agree. I've also been injured so much that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just focus on things that feel good for my body. So the thing you're choosing, it should feel good. It should be fun. And if not, make it as fun as possible because this is like lifelong strategies of learning to just start to tap into your body more and not just be focusing on the brain, right? Because there's just a whole host of benefits that are in our body, strong connection between our body, um, our like our gut specifically and our brain. So yeah. Okay, right, so just to wrap up, uh, if you have any other questions, definitely come on Sunday, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Well, same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, 
We'd also just love to, yeah, hear your thoughts on our very first live AMA. So you can uh, email us any feedback and whatnot, but we will be sending out a replay with this, um, with this video and yeah, stay tuned for our podcast. It's, our date is coming soon. I think May is when our first episode will launch, which will also be uploaded to YouTube. It'll be a podcast and YouTube because we currently still have a YouTube um, but it's more specific, specifically for exercise and nutrition for ADHD. And yeah, stay tuned also for what is to come with uh, a program, a course of sorts and resources on focus and product productivity, top of your career in tech as someone with ADHD, completely med free. Yeah. Any other closing remarks from you, Lincoln? No, um, generally thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, this is all the first great. <laughs> awesome guys. Okay. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. And we can stop recording. Uh.